Joseph Macau and Marian Moko will Kyoko rather will be remanded for 21 days pending completion of investigations. The court also ruled that the third respondent, David Walunya Ongare, be detained for a maximum of 14 days at a police cell near a medical facility due to his medical condition. The suspects will, will be remanded at Embakasi police station as the probe into the gas explosion that has so far claimed seven lives and injured nearly 300 others continues. Meanwhile, WIPA leader Kalonzo Musioka says his law firm will institute a case against Energy Cabinet Secretary Davis Chirchir, Principal Secretary Alex Washira, and Environmental Principal Secretary Engineer Festus Ngeno over the gas explosion incident in Embakasi. Kalonzo says the officials bear the highest responsibility in ensuring Kenyans are safe from such disasters. The WIPA leader has also urged the government to issue timely completion to, or other compensation to all the victims. Take a listen. And we are clear we may have to sue the following. <laughs> Number one, permanent secret for the environment. Number two, the CS4 or CS or PS4 energy. Asmamia mamba epra na mamba kupea na gas na ma licensing na kila kitu. Now the deaths following last Thursday's gas explosion in Miradi area in Bakasi has risen to seven after one more person succumbed to injuries while receiving treatment at a Nairobi hospital. Citizen TV has traced a man who lost his wife and son on the fateful night after they were hit by one of the flying objects where the explosion occurred. John Waiganjo wants the national government to compensate the affected families as, the, as there is enough proof that this was a case of negligence. Take a listen. At Mradi area in Mbakasi, a dejected John Y. Ganjo sits in silence as he gazes at the only memory of his wife and son. It's been a week of mourning. The two are among seven people who died in a tragic gas explosion in the area. Why Ganjo says the family was chatting the night away last Thursday before they heard screams calling on residents to vacate their homes as disaster was about to strike. Kwa kuna very big explosion. Ilikuwa hata wakati ili explode. Watu wote wale na chini. Hakuna kitu mtu, hakuna kitu mtu alikuwa anaona. Kwa kuwa hiyo kuna impact ya ya mabati ili ile juu kwa red. My wife alihitiwa na hiyo kitu kwa barabara hapo. Na mtoto wangu aliaga wania. Na hapo kando kulikuwa na mzee mwingine alikuwa bado ameaga. Waiganjo says the son, Charles Masharia, who was one year old, died on the spot after being hit by the flying object, while the wife, Anya Godie, died on arrival at Nairobi West Hospital, where she had been taken for treatment. They also suffered burns, although the post-mortem results stated cause of death as fracture to the head, which was caused by the flying object which hit them. My wife had an impact on your skull. Last Sunday to make a challenge kwa sababu washirika wengi walikuwa wakitizama kwamba sasa hayupo na jumapili iliyopita ni yeye alikuwa anaongoza praise and worship the family which is planning for the burial on February 13th in Nyahururu Nyandarwa County has appealed to the national government to compensate those affected since there was negligence on the part of government officials for failing to stop illegal activities at the site. Iyo kitu ilikuwa na ina, inafanya kazi usiku ambado serikali ya ikuwa na inajua eh? lakini watu wa hapa walikuwa na jua na upaleta hapo ilikali 
A statement by the government spokesman Isaac Mwaura has stated that they have closed the temporary shelter at the Embakasi social hall after victims who had come to the center were reintegrated into the community and others provided with alternative accommodation. At the same time, an Auditor General's report on supplementary budget expenditure has revealed how the government spent 147 billion shillings without the National Assembly's approval. The report by Auditor General Nancy Gadongu shows that a total of 595 billion shillings was irregularly withdrawn from the ex exchequer over the last nine years, a practice, the auditor says, diminishes trust and confidence in the government and increases the risk of corruption and wastage of public resources. Our very own Seth Olale reports on details, the queries, the raised, the raises by the Auditor General on the unsanctioned withdrawals of billions of shillings in key ministries such as Treasury, Health and Education. Take a listen. Auditor General Nancy Gadungu has raised alarm over continued increase in withdrawals of funds under Article 223 of the Constitution that allows Treasury to spend funds before seeking the approval of the National Assembly. A report by the Auditor General shows that the unsanctioned withdrawals has increased over 13,000 percent during the 2022-2023 financial year with a total of 147.3 billion shillings withdrawn irregularly. What is appalling is that in the last year of the elections, 147 billion Kenya shillings was spent without the authority of parliament. So we have a situation where parliament has been unable to approve some money spent. The special audit report revealing that 5 billion shillings for recurrent expenditure and an additional 2.8 billion shillings for development expenditure requested by five government ministries, departments and agencies were approved by the controller of budget but were not disclosed in the information submitted to the National Treasury. In addition, six ministries and departments incurred expenditure totaling 47.2 billion shillings, which was over and above the amount approved by the National Treasury as additional funding granted under Article 223 of the Constitution. The report revealing that some government ministries and departments exceeded the 10% threshold of the appropriated budget, thus flouting the Public Finance Management Act 2012. The auditor highlighting flaws in purchase of shares by the National Treasury during the financial year 2022-2023, during the financial year 2022-2023. The report, despite the government releasing 6.3 billion shillings to purchase shares in Eastern and South African Trade Development Bank and Africa, Export Import Bank, Afrimix, there is no proof of the procurement. The auditor stating, and I quote, our request on Eastern and Southern African Trade Development Bank shareholding has not been responded to date. As a result, we were unable to confirm purchase of shares and to determine whether there were any benefits that may have accrued to the government of Kenya. The Auditor General also flagging 7.4 billion shillings approved by Treasury for the Fertilizer E-Subsidy Program in September 2022 by stating that although the fertilizer had been distributed to farmers, the program may not have achieved its intended objective as the distribution of the fertilizer was not in time for the planting season. Another program being queried by the auditor is the 21 billion shillings funds meant for distribution of relief food for the financial year 2016-2022. The auditor general states that there were minimal guidelines on relief food distribution, failure to prepare and submit returns on food distribution, failure to fund authority to incur expenditure at the county level, and incomplete distribution lists. And we now find ourselves in a lacuna that uh, is occasioned by the constitution, by the silence of the constitution about the 223. And we would want, uh, because I cry for this country, that if that was to continue and to be allowed to continue, then we would have uh, our country going to the dogs completely. 
The audit irregularities extend to the Ministry of Health, where despite sinking over 500 billion shillings in construction of 17 health facilities, the auditor says, and I quote, most facilities were not in use due to various reasons, such as hospitals lacking the required infrastructure to install the equipment. In addition, hospitals were fitted with faulty equipment valued at 185 million shillings, while equipment worth 155 million were yet to be installed in the financial year 2022-2023. There are also audit queries regarding the 1.7 billion shillings used in the supply of city scans to health facilities after it emerged that CT scans machines in six out of 27 hospitals had expired. In the Ministry of Education, 13.5 billion shillings is in question over the capitation of grade 7 learners in junior secondary schools in the financial year 2022-2023 with a report revealing that 7,340 learners in 187 sampled junior secondary schools did not receive capitation. In addition, eight schools did not receive capitation, denying learners access to quality education. There are also added queries on the 2 billion shillings competency-based curriculum classroom construction project in that, in as much as the funds were meant for construction of 10,000 classrooms, there was poor workmanship in 215 schools at the time of the audit, with nine classrooms left incomplete, while 30 classrooms were not in use. The latest revelations from the Office of the Auditor General comes amidst calls for investigations into the current status of the national debt, as well as concerns raised by the controller of budget in regards to Treasury's involvement in national spending. Seth Olale, Citizen TV, at Parliament Buildings, Nairobi County. All right, thanks so much for that, Seth. Now, listen to this good news. It's a relief for power consumers as electricity prices are set to come down effective midnight tonight. The new prices by Ministry of Energy shows that the cost of electricity for all categories of power consumers will drop by three shillings and 44 cents per unit. Principal Secretary for Energy Alex Washira attributes the price review to huge drop in the foreign exchange adjustment rate. Now, foreign exchange adjustment dropped from 6 shillings and 46 cents per kilowatt hour to 3 shillings and 22 cents per kilowatt hour, owing to a decrease in the total foreign currency exchange payments made in January. The lowering of electricity costs is also a result of a marginal reduction in the fuel energy cost, which dropped by 19 cents. Prepaid users will, you will see the change starting midnight, while post-pay users will pay less at the end of February. Now, some more good news. Charles Marieri from Matopeni in, Kalole, in Kayole is this week's Shabiki Super Jackpot So Bonus winner bagging 402,038 shillings after correctly predicting 13 of 15 matches. Now the prize money rises every week until the 15 of 15 matches listed on play are correctly predicted. The prize money has now risen to 5.7 million shillings to play. Visit www.shabiki.com. Again, www.shabiki.com. Sabiki vile wale naonanga kwa TV na mimi nimekuwa mmoja alafu nichambua mmoja nikachambua na mmoja nikaweka na fefle katika game mbili so nikaona wacha nicharibu na mimi nitakuwa msi msindi so nimechukuta mimi ni mmoja wao i wish ningepata hiyo 15 ningepata hiyo 5 million by the way sitakufa la nitaendelea kucheza for this man it is uh, in a booster uh, I have some my uh, kids ambao mmoja ataenda university tawalipia wengine high school so naona sabiki 
Eh, shabiki ni ya kila mtu it does not matter the team you support eh, kama timu yako inakuangusha huko jaribu hapo kwa shabiki hapo usijiangushe wewe mwenyewe usipocheza unajiangusha unaona eh, eh timu huko wewe una control bila wanacheza lakini hapo uko na control juu unaenda kwa side unajichambulia game wewe mwenyewe unaona unaweza muka jichambulia na bado uweke auto bet just to be safe you umepiga goal goal unaona moja inaweza ikajipa na sisi tuko ready do iko tayari tunakuletea ukianza mwezi kama sasa unaona bwana Charles sasa anaanza mwezi vifiti last week tulikuwa kitengela tukapatiana huko mlolongo it's exactly 39 minutes past the hour welcome back to Jeff Kananga live here at Susan Television on to business news and central bank governor Kamau Thuge has hinted that the CBK could intervene in the foreign exchange market to stabilize the Kenya shilling Thuge who spoke hours after the central bank increased the base lending rate by 50 basis points from 12.5 to 13% noted that although the central bank policy is to allow the exchange rate to be determined by market forces the exchange rate had overshot and did not reflect the current macroeconomic fundamentals offering scope for the regulation to support the exchange rate. Let's get more from our very own Jimmy Mbogo. In his first monetary policy committee briefing of the year, CBK governor sought to defend the MPC's decision to further tighten the monetary policy, saying the 50 basis points increment was one of the tools the bank opted for to ensure inflation remained well anchored, noting that it had remained stubbornly in the upper bound target range. The CBK, however, acknowledged the pressure that a high central bank rate mounts on borrowers expressing concerns that high interest rates could undo the slowdown seen in non-performing loans in the last quarter of 2023. We are concerned about the non-performing loans uh, and what impact the rising interest rates uh, would have uh, on, on them. We continue to keep an eye on them, but uh, we are also uh, convinced that stabilizing inflation and stabilizing the exchange rate at this time is the most critical uh, thing that we, we, uh, we can do. The governor has also expressed optimism that the government will be able to settle both domestic and foreign debt, highlighting the resource mobilization strategy by the National Treasury while reiterating that government has never defaulted on its obligations. We have the resources, the money that is coming in from, coming in from the World Bank, from regional institutions, from, uh, from the international um, uh, multilateral institutions, our accessing uh, capital markets, that uh, this, uh, this risk that, uh, of, the, of the euro bond will be, in my view, will be completely eliminated. With a significant number of transactions in the country happening on mobile platforms, and particularly M-Pesa, the governor has alluded that the central bank is keenly watching the frequent interruption of the service to ensure that it does not stall the economy. And this is an area of concern, and uh, it's an area that we are in very close uh, talks with, uh, with M-Pesa to see how they can be... Uh, Alleviated. An increase in the central bank rate not only anchors inflation, it also attracts foreign investment and offers better returns for those who have invested in government paper. The question that lingers is whose interest is the central bank serving with the latest tightening? Jimmy Bogo, Citizen TV, Nairobi. All right, Jimmy, thanks so much for that. On to our weekly feature, Smart Farm. And Kenya has embarked on a plan to promote cultivation of underutilized crop varieties, especially in the wake of climate change effects. Among the key crops under the plan is the finger millet, which is gaining popularity, especially in the western part of the country. As, as our Dennis Otieno reports, farmers in Busia County are now cultivating the crop on small holdings for both subsistence and improved income. Take a listen. Smart Farm, brought to you by Equity. Bustika from Equity ensures that you don't get stuck when low on cash. So, next time you're sending money, making payments or buying airtime using Star 247 Hash, Equitel or Equity Mobile app and you have insufficient funds, simply accept the Bustika prompt and complete your transaction. <laughs> food on the table and money in the pocket. This was the clarion call given by Wilson Odori, a smallholder farmer, when he began cultivating finger millet crop two years ago. 
Odori, who lives in Sikoma area, Butula sub-county in Busia, grows several other crops which include assorted vegetables, sorghum, cassava and maize on select portions of his three-acre farm. But it is the finger millet that changed his fortunes. Kalo. Ndiyo walinishawishi kupanda mtama. Uu mtama wa, wa muda mfupi kukoma. Natua mtama mwenye umesha koma katika shamba hili. Nilipanda robo eka. Hii ndiyo mara yangu ya kwanza kupanda uu mtama uu mfupi. Lakini kwa napanda mtama lakini ili ya kienyeji. Lenye naenda kwa muda mrefu wa miezi nne tano kwa na upata ki, kiasi kidogo sana focus kwa chakula tu The Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization CALRO has been at the forefront of promoting underutilized crops in a bit to reduce reliance on staples such as maize An underutilized crop refers to a plant with limited current use but with potential to diversify and improve cropping systems. Kalro has reached out to farmers like Odori on the benefits of commercializing such crops. It is one of the crops which are being called as underutilized crops in Kenya. But because of the climate change, previously in the Kenyan, Kenyan population, they are depending on this maize as the main staple. But because of the climate change, maize has been hit by many diseases and so drought is not tolerant. So they need to promote these underutilized foods. Being a climate smart crop, finger millet has the ability to grow under adverse agroclimatic conditions. It is ready for harvest between three and a half and five months after sowing depending on the variety. It is usually harvested by hand, by cutting the seed heads or by cutting the entire plant. So far, Odori is encouraged by the earnings he gets after harvest. A kilo of finger millet is now retailing at 85 shillings, better than sorghum, which costs an average of 50 shillings. Huo mtama ananiwea kutumia kama chakula kwa nyumba, ugali na changanya na mihogo. Sana sana ni chakula na kipato cha senti. We import over 50% of our wheat flour. So if you can make finger millet, you mix with wheat flour to reduce that expansion on wheat flour. And that's why the Kenyan government they came up with the flour blending policy, trying to replace, to minimize the utilization of maize and wheat. By, and the foods of target for blending, a finger millet, sorghum, cassava. The potential of millet as a super crop is now in the limelight, as witnessed during the recently launched Millet Innovation Competition in Nairobi. The initiative, which is a partnership between Unilever Kenya and the University of Nairobi, aims to inspire the most inventive university students to develop sustainable and innovative products based on millet. If you eat finger millet, it's one grain that no pest eats. Once you harvest, there's no storing with pesticides, like super telico or anything. You leave it and it stays until when you want to eat it. No pest eats uh, um, finger millet, so it's kept for us, it's preserved for us. And then the beauty of finger millet for pharmacy seed is that you can keep it and it remains viable to up 15 to 20 years. So you don't need any special storage. We as a country, maybe uh, consumption levels of um, uh, millet-related products, uh, for example, uh, maybe porridge, uh, maybe uh, bread and cakes made of uh, millet, uh, we are not consuming more of this. So uh, it remains underutilized and uh, there is a great potential. And when we see uh, these partnerships coming up, where there's interest from uh, processors, from off-takers to uptake uh, uh, millet, then it offers us an opportunity as a country uh, to go back and uh, increase production of finger millet. Millet, as you know, has been there for, a, it's an ancient crop. And for that we call it the ancient orphan crop. It is a crop that has been neglected or forgotten for that, uh, for lack of a better word. And we are trying to sensitize the public from the farmers to the end users that this is a great, great, great uh, product. According to Calvo, finger millet production in Kenya is estimated at less than 70,000 tons per year, while its national demand is roughly 140,000 tons per year. Denis Otieno, Smart Farm. Smart Farm, brought to you by Equity.
Usikwame Bustika na Equity. Dial star 247 hash. Use Equity Mobile app or Equitel and enjoy an instant cash boost of up to 100,000 shillings with a repayment period of 30 days and you can top up multiple times to complete your transactions. Biashara Usikwame Bustika na Equity. From business to sports, and Nima Pasta and Vimal Rampura were in the winning team together with Lisa Peterson and Gabriel Cowley at the end of the Pro-Am competition at the 2024 Magical Kenya Ladies Open in Vipingo. The Pro-Am teams are up with the amateur golfers with professional golfers before the start of the main competition. Now, the golfers have converged in Vipingo for the 2024 edition of the competition, which is part of the ladies european tour the men's nearest to the pin award went to samuel mwangi with mary Nyam nyambemba winning the ladies award the men's longest drive was won by farin samji with sandra Gedere taking the ladies prize the first group in the round will tee off at 7 45 a.m it will have emily pantilla from finland Slovak Pia Banbik, Bandnik, and Englishwoman Georgina Blackman in hole one. In hole 10, action will start with Tiffany Chan from Hong Kong, Sarah Koliskova from the Czech Republic, and Spaniard Marta Sands. Now, five athletes have been shortlisted for the Sportsman of the Disability Award at the annual Sports Personality of the Year Award set for the KICC in Nairobi on the 23rd of February. Commonwealth Youth Games silver medalist Titus Maundu has made the shortlist as the youngest athlete at, the, at 17 years. Double gold medalist at the Special Olympics, David Nganga, has also made the shortlist after a remarkable feat achieved in Germany. He also won a silver medal at the Games. Paralympic athlete Samson Opio has been shortlisted after winning two gold medals at the 2023 Grand Prix in the 100-meter T37 and 200-meter T37 races. He also won a silver in the T37 long jump. For para-athlete John Jaroge, two gold medals in the 200-meter T11 and 400-meter T11 at the Grand Prix earned him a slot in the final list of nominees. The fifth athlete in the nominations is deaf athlete Kelvin Kip Koech, winner of two gold medals at the 2023 Africa Deaf Olympics Championships. He won the men's javelin and long jump competitions. <laughs> 